Hello and welcome to another free tutorial from Seabus Visual Technology. In this tutorial, we will explore how to create the effect we see right now, a cloth effect based on a 3D object. And we want to control the tearing as well. So where do we start with these kinds of effects, you might ask? At first, it looks really complicated to create this effect from scratch. However, we don't need to do that. We can use, for example, a sample scene that ships with thinking particles and we can go from there, which makes it much easier and faster to set up these kind of effects. And keep in mind, thinking particles ships with hundreds of sample scenes, including this flag that tears apart based on the wind velocity and tear on the flag itself. Let's have a look how this scene is set up in thinking particles. Let me bring up Thinking Particles here. Let me just move over the uh, interface. So we have, at first, we bring in the plane. That's a th our plane object. Then we turn this plane into a soft body. And then down here, we have our procedural anchors. And I will go into more detail later into that setup. We also have a force, a gravity. And last, we have our bullet physics solver. So that's a pretty straightforward setup. As I mentioned, we can use the scene and try to modify it. That will save us a lot of time in setting up visual effects. So we're going to bring in, and I loaded the Stanford bunny. That's an object from the internet, but we could use any 3D object that is watertight. The cleaner the object, the easier it is with our visual effects. So let me just move that to the origin. Doesn't matter where we place this bunny object, but I, I think it's good to place it near the origin. It makes it easier to set up. The next thing we want to do is exchange, swap out our plane with the bunny. So we're going to remove the plane, pick the bunny, and make sure we select the proper particle group, the soft body particle group. And most important, instance shape needs to be turned on so that we get the actual triangles and create a cross simulation. Another thing I will do is I will hide the object right now. So the original object is just hidden. So now when we restart our simulation and this mesh is now turned into a cloth. So our bunny becomes a real cloth simulation now. And that's the beauty of our approach here. We used the flag scene as a base setup for our 3D object here as well. So we can assume that now that we brought in the 3D object, our bunny, and we put it in the right particle group, it is now turned into a soft body, into a bullet soft body. Let's play the simulation in real time and see what's going on. The bunny is just dropping down, so something strange is going on. Let's have a look again at our setup. So we see the soft body here and the force. Yes, that's the gravity that drives our bunny down. So this force needs to be stopped and we are going to do that with our procedural anchors. So this setup we have here is based on this node object and an in-mesh operator. So all the vertices inside of our box object will become a joint or an anchor. So let me just turn on the box object and we'll move the box object where the bunny is. And let me just a little bit adjust the box and we'll move the box down so that we anchor our feet or lower part of our bunny. So every vertex inside of this box will be automatically turned into an anchor. So let's have a look if that actually works. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't go back to frame zero. No problem. The beauty of it, it's fully procedural. We can just move the box up and problem solved. So no damage done. Let me just do a little bit more uh, adjustments. I really want to make sure we grab all the lower vertices of this bunny. And now let's play. 
So we have to go back to restart the simulation because we adjusted everything. So we need to make sure all the simulation parameters are updated. And you can see it's working. However, it's not what we envisioned. We wanted to have some uh, wind blowing from the top. But for now, let's uh, play around a little bit with these box and anchors. And let me just fix the upper part of the bunny. Let's make sure everything is engulfed with the box and let's see what's going on here now. So I restarted the simulation and we are going to play back the simulation. And you see how beautiful it works. So that's what we want. Our little setup we had there with the procedural jointing. Everything inside the box, every vertice in the box will become an anchor. But we can see the wind has nearly no effect at all. So our wind force isn't working for this setup right now. So I'm going back down to the floor and adjust my box a little bit. So we want to make sure that all our vertices are inside the box. So they become an anchor. And now I want to blow wind from below this side up. So that the bunny looks like these strange cloth advertisement things that have a fan in there and blow up in the air. So we want to do this kind of things. Uh, let's increase the force of our wind for the cloth stimulation that's done in the aero rollout. Very simple, very easy. We use the Y and Z axis, all um, plus values, and we have now hopefully achieved what we wanted to see. And yes, it is working. The wind is now blowing from below to the upper side in a slight angle. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve. So we want to have the wind blowing there. Let me just change the material because this is a little bit awkward. I want, don't want the transparent material. So as I mentioned, I just imported the model from somewhere. I got it somewhere. So let me just assign a standard material. That's fine for now to work with the standard material. And there we go. Let's have one more look. Play back and we see, okay, beautiful interaction, cloth interaction with wind and our 3D object. Twisting, blowing in the wind, nice interactions. And remember, all this is played back in real time in your 3D Studio Max viewport. So what we wanted actually to achieve is when this bunny blows in the wind, we want to have the wind force tear apart our cloth over time. So first we want this nice flapping and movement, and then it should tear off some parts of our bunny. So how do we achieve that? How can we do that? We need to adjust some parameters in our soft body. For that, we are going to activate the hero cut section. So we turn it on. And we are using the, as a source of our tearing, we use the real values, the real stress values and no mask at, at all. So first we are going to adjust our other parameters. We want to have enough cracks able to start because it's a high resolution uh, mesh. So we could increase the max count if we wanted that. And uh, for now, we are going to do that because it's always a good idea to have enough possible cracks appearing in our object. And then we want to use the maximum stress and the direction of our crack should go from the maximum stress to the minimum stress in our object cloth simulation. So when we now play back, we would see that not much will happen. Let's see. Because we are using a threshold of 0.98, which is for this setup right now pretty high. So nothing will tear off as we can see here. So we are going to reduce now our threshold and we reduce the threshold. And there, this step is a little bit trial and error because you, you can't tell how much force the wind, the cloth, 
it all depends on all the parameters you have there, how uh, stable the cloth is, how strong the wind is, uh, how much twisting, how much self collisions uh, you have there. So this plays all a role. So you have to do a little bit of trial of error, but it's not too bad. A, a few more uh, settings and setups and there we go. And there we see it starts tearing at the back and the tear is growing and more and more parts of our cloth object are ripped off or ripped apart. Creates actually a really nice chaotic look. So because all is based on the stress values we have here, we have a fully procedural tearing effect. So we actually cannot control right now where and, and when it tears because it is all controlled through the simulation and the physics, the real physics we have here in our setup. The only way to control or kind of control the tearing where it starts is by adjusting the threshold values or which are our measurements or deciding factors of the tear. So we have, as I mentioned before, let me just bring up the settings again, the position. So that means where does the tear start? We can have minimum stress values or maximum stress values. And we can control where the tear should go to. And right now I changed it to the maximum stress. And we can see now we get different behavior in the back where the maximum stress right now is on our surface or cloth and we see it tears there, which is all fine and nice, but we want to have more control. Let me just bring in another scene and then I'll explain what I mean. So I brought in this scene. This is actually the scene we rendered, we used for the beginning of the tutorial. So I added lights, cameras, a floor, and put the surface right there. So the bunny onto the floor. Simple scene setup, nothing spectacular. The cool thing is we can now use Final Render, our RTX renderer, and we can use it even in Active Shade. And then we can go through and simulate and do some renderings. So that's the scene we have here. But from the cloth simulation, we didn't change a lot. The only thing we did, and I'm going to show it to you right now. The only thing we did here is the tearing doesn't happen right from the beginning. So after around 80, 90, it starts tearing and it only tears in the upper area, but the bunny head, for example, never tears. So how did we control that? Because that's a real powerful feature. When we are in control where our cloth is tearing for how long and where it should start. And there's many ways to do that. I'm showing you the easiest way I found. And in the soft body, we just use in our hero cut section, we use the mask, the tearing mask. And for the tearing mask, I'm using a gradient ramp. And this gradient ramp is defining actually where our tear is allowed or starting. All the other parameters, as you can see, are the same as before. We have a maximum tear, going to the minimum and and all these settings are the same. The only difference is now the map. So let me explain how that works. Could be uh, confusing at times, but let me explain how this works by bringing up the original bunny because that's much faster when we play through. Uh, you'll get it in a second. So I'll bring in the original object, which is mapping, UV mapping and everything. So here we go. I'll bring up the material editor and let's have a look at the gradient material. What I'm going to do is I'll swap out the uh, diffuse color with our gradient texture just for illustration purpose. So I'm going to drag and drop the gradient into our diffuse color. So this is what we actually do. And then we should see our gradient in the viewport. For that, we go into the map and turn on viewport display, shade in viewport. So now we see our gradient and you would 
now be confused probably because it's all black. But what happens, let me just play back the animation. You can see we animated the middle key from black to white. And our bunny is turning slowly white in the center. Because our tearing map is actually a multiplier for our stress values, black means there will be no stress at all, so no tearing will happen. And white means full tearing will happen. Let me do the same for the thinking particles object. Let's turn on the display of the gradient and let's have a look with the simulation what's happening and what's going on. And you will see with our threshold value, the brighter it gets, it will eventually start to tear apart our object. It's around 80, I think it starts the first tears. We can't see the background, but there it started. We, we just saw some tearing going on. And that's the real beauty and power of Thinking Particles. Now you are in control, fully procedural. What should tear? How big is the tear? So you can rip this cloth apart in any way you like. And if we had a funny or crazy idea, for example, to change the position where we want to tear, just the upper area or the head area, we would just adjust simply the gradient without redoing simulations and everything. Everything happens in real time. This simulation you see here is in real time. The only thing we did just now is change the gradient. This is a very powerful feature. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will check out our other videos as well. Stay safe and have a nice day. Goodbye.